Hey everyone. Hello. Yeah, there, there wasn't any sound. I didn't turn the uh, the microphone on yet. But hello, welcome, welcome back to IELTS Cafe. Um. Is is the sound on now? How how are we doing for sound? Can you hear me? I need to check. Be weird if no one could hear me. Just just let me know in the chat. Yes, I can hear you. Or great sound. Love that. Love that. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, I I fixed the sound this week, so it should sound really good. No delay. Lovely. What are you drinking, by the way? I am drinking a coffee flavor protein drink. <laughs> Good sound, no problem. Noise! Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So today I have a very special one for you today. Um, this, this is, uh, the topic is smells and memory. Like for me, certain smells bring back such vivid memories. So... Just as an example, when I go through an airport or through any shop which smells cologne, perfume, I have to pick up Davidoff, the cool water. I don't know if you know that one. It's a blue thing. Um, I don't wear it, but I love the smell because it reminds me of... Um, and I want to hear your memories with smells too. Look at the top of this. Um, which smells remind you of what? Your childhood, a nice time event in your life, or a member of your family? Um, the PDF, this is part of the PDF I made. You can, you can work through it by yourself for self-study. It's very good for that. Or you can work with a class or just with a partner who is also studying English. Very useful for all those situations. You're not going to go wrong. But for me, yes, the smell of Davidoff cool water, it reminds me of a family holiday that we had years ago. And I wore it so much because I was a teenager and I sprayed it everywhere. So, yeah, when I smell that, it reminds me of a nice holiday. What about you, though? What, like... What, what smells remind you of different things, like your childhood, a nice time or event in your life, a member of your family? Let, let me know in the comments. I want to read some. That's sensory memory, isn't it? Beba Jimenez. It is. It is. I don't know. Um, the best teacher. I mean, yes. Please hype me up more. Also, if you haven't, like this video and subscribe. And if you want access to these PDFs, you'll see that half of them in this session and you'll get the full the full pdfs if you join as a channel member but specifically an ielts channel member they have the links to get this um but yeah oh the smell of plane cabin remind me of travelings Travelings? Just travelling. No S. Pat M! Pat... I swear. I swear... Pat M? I swear you do this on purpose. You're here at the beginning or the end of my streams every time. But we, we love you, Pat M. Um, you have to go to work now. Have a lovely day at work, Pat M. I hope you have a great time. Smell of a fresh bacon cake. Bacon? No, that's not the word. A freshly, a freshly baked, baked with a D, not an N. Freshly baked cake reminds me of the delicious foods that my grandma cooked and my happiest moments in my life. Oof. Chala, that is a great memory, my friend. That is a great memory. Love that. Um, Hui Nguyen says the smell of flowers remind me of Lunar New Year. Which flowers specifically? Like, is it a type of flower? Morning means smelling coffee everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. Too true. Too true. We love coffee. We love it. Even though the um, caffeine's probably not great. It's probably good. Also, I want you to notice this. 
This is the uh, breakdown. It's uh, from Word Inspector. This is a really good way of analyzing texts from academic articles. For teachers, it's very, very good, but for students, it's interesting. So look at this. This is, we're going to read an article. Let me just show you quickly. We're going to read an article which is roughly the same length as one article from the IELTS academic reading section. Remember, in IELTS reading, you have three articles. It should, mm, I say as a guide, 20 minutes for each. That includes the reading and finishing the questions. Keep that in mind. Um, so each one of these, we do one of those. And in this, look at this. You'll notice the, um, can I, I can. A1 vocabulary, that is beginner level vocabulary. Of course, that is the most common type of vocabulary you'll see in articles. Why? Because not every word needs to be C1, C2, you know? So don't worry about, um, oh, my vocabulary isn't good enough. You'll see in this lesson and in my PDFs that you just have to practice. You just have to practice. That's the main thing. Because look, C1 and C2, look at that. It's like nothing. That's how much C1, C2 vocabulary you need. Not much. So if your basic vocabulary is pretty good, you have a good command of basic grammar, you should be able to understand the rest from context. And it shouldn't be that bad. Um, this unlisted load of vocabulary, um, the writer for this, they were kind of poetic. Um, it looks good, but yeah, so the text inspector didn't recognize it as any level. And these, they could usually be people's names, university names, things like that, right? So, don't worry. Most well-polished English teacher. Is that because I have a bald head? <laughs> I live in the south, so here is famous for apricot blossom. While in Hanoi, it's peach blossom. Peach blossom? Does it smell like peach? Because that would be delicious. Mm, I'd love that. Love that. Medi life. The earthy scent produced when rain falls on dry soil brings back memories. Oh, it brings back nostalgia and feelings that's quite hard to describe. Notice feelings with an S. Feelings that are plural. At work, yeah, watching your life. I'm not proud of myself, but it's a cool thing to do. I mean, depends what your job is. You know, if you're, um, if you have the time and you want to improve your vocabulary, it's a great thing to do. Yeah. Okay, one more. The smell of booze reminds me of my high school days. I wouldn't be able to handle it now. Kind of a lightweight. Yeah, me too. Me too. I just have one beer and I'm ready to sleep. I know my limit, finally learned the lesson drinking coffee and turning 30 is it your birthday today is it your birthday today happy birthday if it is that would be amazing everyone please say happy birthday to emmanuel and if it's not your birthday you should feel bad because we're all gonna say happy birthday to you yeah okay so bringing your attention to this um which smells remind you of your childhood nice time in your life member of your family. This article talks about that. Why certain smells remind us so strongly of people, places, and things. Why we associate certain memories with them. It is your birthday. Okay, then happy birthday. Manuel, I hope you have all the best. I wish you all the best for now and for the rest of this year, but no more. I'll have to repeat the wish next birthday. Because after that, 
I, I don't wish you any more good luck. Yeah. Happy birthday, bud. Hope you have a great day. Alrighty. Shall we read the article? I think we should. Alrighty. So, yeah, this is adapted. I've adapted these articles to make them more useful to you. It's no good reading an article full of certain vocabulary if that won't help you. If it's a word you'll only see once in your life, you know? So I've adapted it to make it a bit more useful for you as IELTS or academic students. All right, so neurobi neurobiologists and cognitive psychologists explain why we remember childhood smells so well. I will read this to you. This is not the full article, by the way. I will read this to you. If you have any questions about vocabulary or pronunciation, please let me know. I'll make a note of it and we'll talk about it together. Also, channel members, if you've already downloaded this, um, Eugenia, I think Eugenia already has, right? Um, it might be easier to practice this with me. If you're a channel member, you can download this PDF. It's quite long. Um, full of, just to give you an idea, it's, it's full of everything. Look at all this. Oof, oof, oof. There's a lot. There's a lot going on. So yeah, if you wanna if you wanna get this PDF, I've made everything lovingly. You still have time. You can download it and we can work on it together. Or you can rewatch this live later today. I'll save this live so you can rewatch it. Um Oh, 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 oh. Here we go. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to read this to you in my sexy voice. <clears throat> Are you ready? I still remember what my great grandmother smelled. <coughs> Bad start. Let me have a drink. I still remember what my great grandmother smells like. Even though she passed more than a decade ago, I know her favorite perfume just as well as I recall every contour of her face. Her scent came back to me recently when my boyfriend came over after spending several hours sitting in a room where incense was burning. The smoky, with smoke, aromatic blend fused with his clothing and memories of my great grandmother flooded in when I hugged him. I felt warm, loved and safe. This experience is not unlike the familiar story of someone walking through a department store's perfume aisle and remembering an ex-lover. It's similar to the shared fondness my boyfriend and I have for the smell of freshly ironed, uh, freshly flat ironed hair. Now this, I don't know. I don't have hair. Guess it's a type of ironing of your hair. A peculiar odor that comforts us because it spurs the memory of watching our respective mothers press their hair when we were children. Mm. Yeah, I think I feel like everyone's grandparents had a specific smell, no? Also, you'll notice there are a few words to describe smells. We will talk about it, don't worry. Grandmother's room had a special aroma. Yes, right? It, it was there their perfume, I think. Next. Smell, alongside taste, is one of the oldest of the five human senses, and it plays a critical role in helping us assess the safety of our environment. Humans have approximately 400 cell receptors for detecting smells, compared to the 35 receptors used to sense flavors. This primitive protective adaptation is deeply intertwined with our emotional and cultural experiences due to its direct connection to the amygdala hippocampal complex. I was worried I would mispronounce that. That immediate neurological connection to the emotional epicenter of our brain is part of why our retention of smells first encountered in childhood is so strong. Let's go. Fondness. So, we need to look at the word fond. This was where? There. 
fondness. Yeah. So fondness means you like something, but it's the noun of like. My like for something, my fondness for something. It's the same thing. Fondness is the noun of like. Or when you say, hmm, I'm quite fond of coffee. Hmm, I, I quite like coffee. It's the noun of that verb to like or to be fond of. Just miss my grandma. Oh, they're the best. Shall we continue? So also, um, there's little lesson notes here. So I'll, the we talked about the, uh, oops, not there. Maybe, no, no, I'll get there in the end. I wonder if I can do this. No. You can see it in the thing, right? There we go. So an aisle. Yeah, it's a corridor or a walkway. So on a plane, they ask you, do you want to sit in the window seat or the aisle seat? I don't know what that is in your language. Aisle. Pronunciation, same as I will, contracted. Aisle. Um, yeah, so don't let the S confuse you. It's not Azel. Aisle. Also, um, yeah, due to means because. It's another way to say because, because of. Yeah, there we go. Spurs. Now, there is a vocabulary uh, practice later, but let's do this one now. It's easier. So to spur something. Let's. Okay, in context, if I say, um, hmm, these lessons really spur me to study more. The, <clears throat> the videos spur me to become a better student. Can you feel the, the feeling of that? The meaning of it? To spur means to motivate. Butter smell reminds me of when I had breakfast as a teen. I went to throw up immediately in the loo. Wow, that's a weird memory. <laughs> yeah. In Spanish, we say both aisle. You say aisle? Oh, and corridor to say pasillo. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Okay. Alrighty. Let's continue. <clears throat> You'll also notice I've highlighted words, right? So um, the red words I've put in a separate thing down here. This is biology vocabulary. So you might, you might see the, oh, sorry. These are blue words. The highlighted blue words. You might see these in other biology related uh, articles or texts. The red ones, however, are very, very specific and very um, technical. So you might not see them again. Those are what I like to call the don't hate yourself for not knowing this vocabulary. So there are some texts which you'll read and they'll have unique words like these. You'll never see them again. So don't worry if you don't know them. You're not expected to. I don't know the meaning of one, two, two and a half of those words. Like amygdala hippocampal? I don't know that. I've been speaking English all my life. I don't know what that means. Um, anosmia? I only understand that because of COVID. When they said the symptom was you can't smell or taste. That's the only reason I know anosmia. Um, olfactory, yes, I know that. Like, smell stuff. But yeah, j just don't... <laughs> My point is, don't worry too much. Because th there's going to be words that you won't know. And that is okay. You're not expected to know everything. The red ones often have Latin roots. Whoops, this one. Yeah. 
I'm a biochemist. Those words are familiar to me. Well, see, Romelia, exactly. If you are very specifically working in this field, it makes sense. However, not everyone taking the IELTS will know that, right? So, also, the most important thing is that those words aren't that important to finish the reading section successfully, if that makes sense. So you don't need to understand that in order to get top marks in your reading. It's not important. Um, what is important is understanding the general context and what it's trying to say. Yeah. It's really comforting. I didn't know. <laughs> I know, right? It's, um, yeah. There will always be that. And don't worry, I've highlighted everything that I think you will have problems with. That's why I work very hard on these PDFs. So if you want them, come a chat, become a channel member. You can get them really easy. And well, um, difference. I don't know what the context of that was, so I can't be bothered to read. I'm sorry. All right, let's continue. That direct physiological connection between our noses and our brain's emotional processing center is one reason we categorize aromas using the same terminology we use to describe sentiments, feelings, such as comforting, heavy, pleasant, or nauseating. Nauseating means blah, you want to vomit, throw up. It also explains why anosmia, you can't smell anything, a condition that leads to weak or non-existent sense of smell can result in mental trauma. For a lot of people, the loss of food pleasure is absolutely devastating. Yeah, if you got COVID, if you got that not being able to smell symptom, that's a depressing week because you can't enjoy food. Like the most basic joy and you can't sense it. It was awful. I hate that. I'm um, just putting the microphone this side because it's easier. Sounds better. There we go. Kind of looks like a missile aimed at my face. Alrighty. Doop de doop. We're like here ish, if you're following along. For a lot of people, the loss of food pleasure is absolutely devastating. Uh, says John Hayes, the director of the Sensory Evaluation Center at Penn State, noting that smell plays a significant role in how food tastes. But for other people, the loss of that emotional connection to smell can lead to feeling isolated. Experiences that occur between the ages of 3 and 11 have a profound effect, a deep, strong effect, on a child's emotional intelligence. So developing a poignant association with a particular smell is likely part of the imprinting process nearly all humans go through. This is Mike McBeef, a cognitive psychologist at Arizona State University. Again, those will be the unlisted words, the names, places. You want to remember smells when you first encounter them as a kid to learn the structure of the world around you. These associations might be something that helps us recognize where home is. Children are also still learning to control their emotions, which means they might experience extremes. When such a feeling is tied to scent exposure, it might ingrain the connection deeper in a child's memory. While newborns, babies, can recognize only a few odors, a child's sense of smell will sharpen up up until age eight. Then it levels out until about 20 years of age when it starts a slow decline that continues to intensify with age. Now, I don't know if that means the decline... Oh, it does. Yes. Duh. I'm so stupid. The decline intensifies with age. Okay. It's important to focus. That might be one of the questions they ask. Maybe, does your scent... Does your smell sense continue improving after 20 or does it decline after 20? You need to know. You need to pay attention, unlike me. 
While individual in experiences with scent vary wildly, the process for memory association is, by and large, the same. By and large just means, eh, more or less. Now I've lost my place. By and large, the same. It's like... Okay, good. The olfactory nerve is the shortest cranial nerve with only two synapses separating it from the amygdala, the emotion processing area of the brain, says Macbeef. Macbeth? Macbeef. Macbeth. From there, a smell has to hop only three synapses to the hippocampus, the brain's working memory region. Aromas hit the back of our brains more quickly than visual or auditory sensations which require more processing in the prefrontal pre cortex before reaching the hippocampus. I know it's here, I don't know what it does. Your initial experiences of smelling your grandmother's perfume remain stored in your brain so you know how to react if you whiff that substance again. Though there is no concrete evidence, an imprinted memory of smells is thought to be evolutionary and advantageous advantageous is the pron pronunciation. According to experts interviewed for this article, it does make sense that when you first encounter a smell, your brain identifies it as good or bad in order uh, to avoid potential future dangers. That's one reason you can have these very strong associations. And yeah, I've got that biology vocabulary. I'm just going to keep going until the end. I think that's easier. It's easier to follow, no? While humans are more, there we go. While humans are more likely to have a pleasant smell associations, this isn't always the case. Smells can trigger negative reflexes or even symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder. One example is spoiled food, old food, food that's gone moldy, old food. The smell of it prevents you from wanting to put it in your mouth to begin with. Some emotional cues are hardwired to certain smells, such as, again, the repulsive stench of toxins or the sour odor of spoiled food, because we're born disliking the taste profile of sour food to protect us from eating it. That's interesting. Fucking evolution's crazy interesting. Like, I wish I studied it. I'm not that smart. This innate wiring, according to McBeef, treating us like a computer. When they talk about hardwired wiring, it's talking about how your brain works. Uh, this innate wiring, according to McBeef, is part of the reason utility companies add a rotten egg smell to natural gas. Yeah, I've noticed that. Since the sometimes poisonous substance otherwise evades our senses. Evade, escape. Though the first odorization of natural gas began in the 1880s in Germany, the practice became widespread following a gas explosion caused by an undetected leak at a Texas school in 1937. Okay. But many smell cues are learned in a lifetime. Babies, for example, don't inherently think poop smells terrible. Fascinating. Instead, they learn to be disgusted from it by the facial reactions their caregivers make when changing their diapers, explains Hayes. That I had never thought of. Like, babies don't care about the smell of poo. They just don't care. And I guess that makes sense, right? But then I'm thinking, if you never reacted to it, would a baby not learn to hate the smell of poo? That can't be right, can it? Anyway, last bit. We're always looking for these novel cues in the environment, which is why a lot of our childhood memories are based on first smells. Our brain pairs that new novel sensory experience with whatever was happening at the time. Our body is trying to protect us by helping us learn how to navigate through the world. Our bodies are ridiculously cool. Like, crazy, crazy cool. First time I can see the word poignant for smelling. Honestly, yeah, me too. I've never seen it used in this context. But if you know the meaning, it makes sense. 
um, to encourage. That was to spur. Yeah, good one. Nice one. Um, the loss of smell is even worse for dogs. Means everything. Oh, I didn't think of that. So that's really sad. I never thought dogs could get that. Wow. Hmm. I'm um, imprinting process. So again, think of your brain like a computer to imprint. Put something in your brain strongly. <laughs> That's the easy way to explain it. To imprint. About the poo smell, you'll eventually react to it. I would hope so. Because it's gross. <laughs> Yeah, all right. So, are you ready for some vocabulary then? So, we're going to do a vocabulary builder here. Um, the answers are on the final page, but I'm not going to give them to you yet. So, you have a task right now. You can, if you already have the PDF, you can look through it again to find the context. But this is your task. You can work through it as a group in the chat if you want. Or... Work on it alone. I would recommend that one. Or if you have a friend next to you, work on it together. So these words, all in the article. What do they mean? The possible definitions are in red. So match the number to the letter. Which word matches to which definition? We've already done spur, number six. We've already done that, right? So which one does six spur match to? What do you think? Yeah, they don't care. The babies. Yeah, I never realized that until I read the, the article. Um, I'll give you like three to five minutes to work on this. Babies are gross. Like, they just gross human beings. <laughs> um, spur, yeah. So what does spur mean? E, you say E, what's E? Motivate to do something. Yes, exactly. So you could use this in sentences like... Um, Ali's videos really spur me to study harder. Ali's videos spur me to uh, become a better student. These exercises spur my thirst for knowledge, if you want to be, you know, crazy about it. Also, if you were in my speaking class, you can join on Patreon. You can recognize at least one of these videos that one of these words sorry mm. 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 so yeah you all seem to agree six is e absolutely i totally agree with you well done Give you one more minute. Any of you heard Jisoo's new song, The Flower? I'm a big fan. First time I heard it, I was like, eh, it's okay. But Spotify keeps playing it, and honestly, now I really like it. Romelia, which level are your speaking classes? Um, they're like intermediate to advanced. So um, it's like it, I say it's a chill intermediate to advanced. So I have more advanced students who, you know, really want to practice their pronunciation. Um, I have intermediate students who are just very, very good students and they improve very quickly. So yeah. Also, everyone's like super, super cool in the class. 
Um, again, you can join on Patreon. The link to my Patreon is in the description for this video. Also, the link to get these PDFs in the description for this video. All right, let's do the answers then. So Beba says two is H, two is Q. Yes, if you were in my speaking class last month, we did a song and this word came up. A Q is indeed H, a thing said or done as a signal. Yes. Um, for example, in a theater, an actor waits for his cue. The signal to do something. A cue is a signal. It can be a verb, it can be a noun. So two is indeed H. Well done. Um, what have we got here? 9B, Beba. Poignant. Interestingly new or unusual? No. No, that's not that's not correct. What have we got? 7G. Retention. Keeping something in your memory. Yes. Well done. Seven is G. Two is H. Four. Wait, I should be making a note of this so I can give you a list. Bear with me, please. I'm just being a rubbish um, teacher, doing everything way too late. What have we got here? Or a C contour? Yes, absolutely. Um, I'm going to try and read your name. Orinen, Orinen, Orinen. Ken, Ken. Orinen keg keg sorry my korean just isn't that good enough but you're right four is c absolutely um what have you got there 3b novel new yes well done absolutely oh okay there we go good okie doke um And then, of course, 5F. Yes, well done, Alex. Really, really good. Um, thank you for reading my nickname. Did I get it right? I don't think I did. I don't think I got your name right. H how can I say your name? Three B, that's absolutely right. Six E, absolutely. Okay, let me give you the answers in order. So one is D, two is H, three, B, four, C, five, F, six, E, seven, G, eight, A, and nine, I. Oinen, quack, quack. Oh, like you're a duck? Are you a duck? Sorry, hiccups. The cocktail. Did you get everything correct? Let me know if you got everything correct. Argentina, Canada. Hey, how you doing? How's your day? Are you just waking up? Are you just going to sleep? What time is it in Argentina or Canada? Where are you right now? Chala, you got 8A? You legend, Chala. Well done. Well done. And then Jenny got E. Well done. Um, you'll also notice if you become a channel member, you get your name um, highlighted. You get a special icon. I'm going to update these icons too. I want to update them. So I will. Is that right?
Yeah, nice. Okay, good. Medlife has the answers there. Good job, Medlife. You legend. Uh, that is... These are the answers in order for this. Um, in Argentina, Mendoza. Cool. 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 Um, yeah. So, continuing. Um, I want to do one more thing because this is really fun. If you get the PDF, you'll be able to do lots more practice with the vocabulary and understanding this better in an IELTS way. For example, we've got um, vocabulary in context, reading comprehension and speaking practice. You can do that with partners, whoever. But this is what I really want to do with you right now because this is fun. So this is a quick thing, how to manipulate English. Um, yeah, so in that first paragraph, it was saying something is not unlike something else. Now, usually we say don't use double negatives, but there's a type of double negative that you can use, and it's this. Um, so when you say this is not unlike this, you can just say this is similar to this, but it's more fun. Um, and it will make you sound more fluent, you know? It will make you sound like you have control over English as a language. So good to know. And I want you to practice in the comments some of this. So we're going to try this together. Um, there we go. Right. So my example is learning English is not unlike going to the gym. In other words, learning English is similar to going to the gym. You constantly need to train your brain muscles. So now you in the comments, write your own examples of this. Um, if you want to pause the video before we continue, you can do that. It's a, it's a video. You can pause. Um, yep. Yeah. Also, there are other examples like it's not uncommon. Um, if you watch Silicon Valley, there's a really funny moment someone reacts to this and it because it's kind of confusing when you say well it's not uncommon it's not negative un negative common huh wait does that mean it's common or it it's not immediately obvious so it's an interesting way of talking again you could just say it's common enough to be worth mentioning could say that but this is a more fun way of saying it. Watching from Cuba. Hello. Um, I'm glad to have you here, Jorge. You're a legend. And I hope you're having a great day. So yeah, write your own examples using a sentence like this. Um, it's not unlike, uh, it's not uncommon, or it's not insignificant. So I'll give you my examples, then I'll read yours. Um, yeah, it's not uncommon to see vegan restaurants in London. So it, again, it has a feeling of, well, maybe you think it's uncommon. That's why I use the negative. It's not uncommon. That's one reason why we talk like this. Another, it's just fun. Um, so yeah, maybe you think it's not common Maybe in your country it's not common, but here it's not uncommon. The same with it's not insignificant. It's not insignificant. Yeah. Not insignificant number of voters will vote for the underdog in this upcoming election. The underdog is the person not likely to win, not expected to win. It's good for sports or anything where there's competition. Yeah. And, uh, yep, like I say in the bottom there, you might think this is a weird way to talk, but it's not wrong. This is just a normal way we say things. All right, let's get your examples. Uh, Vegemite is not unlike Marmite. They're both pretty disgusting. This is a very controversial topic. Yes. Um, I like Vegemite. Sometimes. But yes, they're quite similar, aren't they? Vegemite is not unlike Marmite. Yeah, just Australian. 
The system is never unresponsive. Again, it takes you like a second to realize what they mean, but it's good. It's good. It's good, Romelia. You're good. Well done. Unabi, how you doing, buddy? It's not uncommon to meet English pe English speaking people all over the world today. Nice example. Nice example. Talking to my dog is not unlike talking to the wall. <laughs> yeah, but the dog is so cute. And your wall, I'm assuming it's not that cute. Okay, Chala, I want you to change the sentence. Fighting on the streets is not like fighting in the ring. Try to use one of these type of sentences, Chala. Um, Oksana, again, we can we can improve this. Cooking for the whole family every day is not unlike pleasant thing. Okay, we can improve this, Oksana. You can remove unlike and just put unpleasant. Cooking for the whole family every day is not unpleasant. Stop. It's not unpleasant. Again, you're saying maybe you think it's un unpleasant. Maybe it sounds unpleasant, but it's not. It's not unpleasant. Uh, it's not com. It's not common. Remember, we're using a double negative, Argentina, Canada. It's not common to stay awake for fifty hours. I mean, yeah. But try to use it's not uncommon for something. You're late. Don't worry, Bella. You still have time. You still have time. Thank you. No, thank you for writing the comment. It was a. It's a good time to improve and practice. Okay, I finished my coffee. It's time to finish this. It's not uncommon to spend Sundays on the sofa. You've got a, an adjective and then a verb. Not uncommon to spend Sundays. Not uncommon to go. Not uncommon to do. You need a to after the adjective with a verb. It's not uncommon to have a sunny day in the UK. <sighs> Way to make me feel sad. In the summer, sure. But right now? It's grey outside. So sad. To spend. Nice! Nice, Biba! You legend. Well done. Um... Ooh, look at this. Working extra hours is neither unusual nor un unexpected. <claps> Romelia, you're the one, you're like a doctor, right? Or something? You said you're a biology something. Try and, I'm going to try and remember all of you. Uh, if, if we do these regularly, then I need to remember your names, faces, jobs, likes and dislikes. Um, yeah. So if you have any other questions or any other sentences that you want me to check using the vocabulary from today, questions about the reading, let me know in the comments. We're going to do one. You're a biochemist. Okay, cool. Now I remember. Um, I'd like to pass my C1 or C2. Why not? Do it. Do it. Practice. This is all you need to do. Um, I think the one thing that people overlook is just practicing it you can get um for free online you can get free past papers for ielts or toefl toic whatever you're studying for you can get a past paper practice with it 
find out what score you got. Do another one. Do another one. You'll find that focus is the hardest thing, more than anything else. If you can practice your focus for the exams, you're going to be fine. You're going to be fine. It's not unusual to be loved by... Oh! No! <laughs> that took me a second. I like that one. Really good. Um, it's not uncommon for us to be grateful for your help, Ali. Thank you, Marina. You legend. Thank you so much. Look at this. Look at this. Vitaly Slonov. I don't disagree with you. What a great sentence. I love that. Yeah, a double negative where it's acceptable. Love that. Um, and notice it gives more feeling, right? So if you just say, I agree with you, it's like a 100% agreement, right? If you say, mm, I disagree with you, 100% disagreement. But when you say, well, I don't disagree with you, you can feel there's something more. There's something more complex than just yes or no. So it, this adds more complexity to your sentence. So it's really good to use. Use this in your exams. Mwah. It'll be really good. Um, you know why as well? Because this is a structure. It's not a word. When you do your IELTS speaking exam or any speaking exams, it's so obvious. It's so obvious when a student learns some words before and thought, I'm going to use these words, these C1, C2 words in my exam. They go in the exam. They have their speaking exam. And you can you can see it. They're like, yeah, yesterday I went to the club and um, lots of people were superficial. And it's so obvious you know what they're doing. So... It's better to not try to trick your examiner by learning C1, C2 vocabulary to use in your exam. No, it's better to get a general vocabulary, build that up and learn structures. That is my advice. This type of thing, using a double negative is something you have to learn in order to control the language. Now. Yeah. Um, at the end of the lesson, could you give a link to this article? Yeah, if you want to um, get the PDF, the link is in the description for this video. Um, it, it's the first link. You join my channel as a member. Um, yep, join my channel as a member. Then on my community tab, there's a first post. You'll see it right there. First post. It gives you the link to the PDFs. There's this and another one. There are two PDFs at the moment. Every time we do IELTS Cafe, it will build. So there's more every time. Plus you support the channel and it means I don't do it for free. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I like this one. Living alone is unlike living with family. I mean, okay, it's correct, but you need to change it to a double negative, remember. Um, I'd be happy if I had some speaking practice with you. Yeah, so I'm definitely going to add that to future IELTS cafes, I think. Maybe we could do a, like a mini... Like a mini speaking exam or something. That could be fun. That could be fun. Regular language practice is not insignificant. I love that. I love that. It's not uncommon to feel terrified and forget what to say during an English speaking exam. I totally agree. Totally agree. Focus and nerves are the biggest things for your exams. The biggest things. Yeah. 
Um, Kate, thank you. Thank you for watching, Kate. Zeba, legend, thanks for watching. Um, okay, I think we're going to do maybe one more thing here. Let's do... Can't do that. Hmm. Yeah, no, you're going to need the article for that. Okay, so if you want to get this PDF, the link is in, my dis in the description. Channel members get this as an IELTS student member. That's very important to remember. You don't get it at the other levels. Um, so have fun studying with this. Have fun making new sentences. I hope you have a lovely week and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.